I must be going. I cannot stay. I came to say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. I can't help noticing your hat. My hat? I, uh, I don't understand that. What's wrong with it? <laughs> Roger, what's the worst film you ever did? Most of them, I would say. No. Well, you look fine, and this show's gonna be a big hit because you're on at 10 o'clock at night. Right. A lot of people are gonna watch it. I'm on at 9 central time. Well, I, I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I, uh, no, I can, I can be funny most of the time. When you made films, though, you had to get up very, very early. And yes, that's, that's why I objected to making... I made 18, 19 pictures. I mean, uh, I don't mean that was the year we made them. <laughs> I was in London. And, and I was over there. I was doing some show. It was terrible, anyhow, the show. But at any rate, I had dinner at the American Embassy over there. I was a kind of, kind of a court jester. They thought I was very funny, and they invited me always. And one night, Jackie uh, Onassis was there and her sister. Lee Radziwill and her husband, Radziwill's husband. It's kind of silly to waste time on that one. I, it's a <laughs> silly to waste time on this whole show, yeah. You know, there's only one men's room in the whole building here. And, and, and that's for women. Boy, there's nothing like a thrifty network. Eh? I, I wish there were a transcript of somewhere. Did anybody, did anybody write it down or take notes on it? No, I don't know, but I, I got a lot of laughs uh, <laughs> talking about Hardy because the whole audience was crying. All the women in the audience were crying and the, yeah. and the rain coming from the roof. It was a very weird, weird speech. <laughs> Lydia, the tattooed lady. She has eyes that men adore so, and a torso even more so. Lydia, oh Lydia, that encyclopedia. Oh Lydia, the queen of tattoo. On her back is the Battle of Waterloo. Beside it, the wreck of the Hesperus too. And proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. When a robe is unfurled, she will show you the world. If you step up and tell her where. For a dime you can see Kankakee or Paris or Washington crossing the Delaware. La, 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 la. Oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, say, have you met Lydia? Oh, Lydia, the tattooed lady. When her muscles start relaxing, up the hill comes Andrew Jackson. Lydia, oh Lydia, that encyclopedia, oh Lydia, the champ of them all. For to bet she will do a mosaica in jazz with a view of Niagara that nobody has. And on a clear day you can see Alcatraz, you can learn a lot from Lydia. La, la, la. along and see Buffalo Bill with his lasso. Just a little classic by Mendel Picasso. Here's Captain exploring, exploring the Amazon. Here's Godiva, but with her pajamas on. Oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, say, have you met Lydia? Oh, Lydia, the champ of them all. She once swept an admiral clear off his feet. The ships on her hips made his heart skip a beat. And now the old boy's in command of the fleet. For he went and married Lydia. I said, Lydia. He said, Lydia. I 
But what happened? Anyhow, this priest said to me, he says, aren't you Groucho Marx? And I says, yes. He says, gee, uh, my mother's crazy about you. And I says, really? I didn't know you fellas had mothers. <laughs> we used to go to school in the morning. My mother always fixed sandwiches for us in the morning to go to school because we lived in 93rd and the school was at 93rd. But by the time we got to school, we were hungry again. <laughs> so we always ate our lunch and then we went home and had lunch again in 99. <laughs> my mother was always so astonished. She's like, prepared lunch for you. Why don't you eat it? She says, we ate that on the way to school. <laughs> you got Reagan on tomorrow night, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I knew a fellow. What? I knew a fellow used to take his wife home. I didn't hear you. I knew a fellow that used to go steady with his wife before she married Reagan. Oh, I'm glad you added that. Uh, um, Garbo? Greta Garbo. Did I ever tell you the story of her, the Thalberg so. building in New York? I don't think so. Would you in like California. to? California, yeah. She, <laughs> she used to affect very big hats. She was a very shy woman. She really was. And she had these big hats. And they had, the, this was a sixth floor building, the Thalberg building in, in uh, Los Angeles. And she would back into the elevator if she had to go to the elevator because she didn't want anybody to see her or talk to her. She was such a big star. I was standing in the elevator, too, and she backed in. I didn't know who it was. And I took the back of her hat, which was uh, away up here, like this, and I took the back and I lifted it down until her whole face was covered. <laughs> and she was furious. And she lifted the hat up, and uh, she looked at me and gave me a withering look. And I, I, I said, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were a feller I knew from Kansas City. <laughs> That's a true story. It's a nice story. Yes. I met her sub subsequently about 10 years later at a party, mm -hmm. and we discussed this, and she was very nice about it. Yeah. She had big feet, but she was a nice woman. <laughs> now, my uh, dinner party was Mary Churchill, a beautiful girl. <laughs> And I knew the other one, too, Sarah, who was always loaded. <laughs> There's nothing a lot of people drink. True. You see, you see anything wrong with that? <laughs> Can you think of some more of them while we're... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you all marry late in life? All the brothers married relatively late. I mean, I believe Harpo, Harpo was in his Harpo. 40s. Harpo was around 37 when he got yeah. He had seen what happened to me in my marriages and decided to stay single as long as possible. What is the right age to marry? The first time I got married was the right age, 30. Yeah. Are you proposing? <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody can just remain companionable. No, but I'm, I'm very funny. <laughs> we weren't talking about you. We were saying oh, in general, in general. No, no, I'm talking about me. I'm not interested in generals. <laughs> I had had a number of third-rate automobiles, mm -hmm. and I wanted a new car. And now that I was doing Alsace years, I had enough money to buy a Studebaker. Studebaker. And, uh, the salesman who sold it to me, he was French, and he pronounced it Studebaker. And I thought, this is a pretty classy car, Studebaker. <laughs> it was made in Indiana or something. It had nothing to do with France. What can I, I, had a, I had a priest stop me up in Montreal some years ago, and he came up to me and says, aren't you Groucho Marx? And I says, yes. He says, may I shake your hand? I says, fine. I shook hands with him. He said, I want to thank you for all the joy you've put into the world. And I says, I want to thank you for all the joy you've taken out of it. 